Let's have a look at our fairly simple measurement system for our cantilever beam load cell. It's got four strain gauges on it, which have uh, relatively known resistances, typically 100 or 120 ohms, but they'll have some uncertainties on them. And then when we apply a mass M on that load cell, it'll cause those resistances to change. So if we've got those resistances hooked up in a Wheatstone bridge, then we'll see that this measured voltage, which is going to be proportional to this excitation voltage, the power supply voltage, this measured voltage will change as these resistances change. And we know that that's really close to being a linear relationship. But that measured voltage is going to be really small. So we're going to take it out and we're going to run it into an INA125 instrumentation amplifier. And it's going to have an offset, some pseudo ground value, and some gain that we'll set with a resistance. And that will increase the magnitude of this voltage and offset it to produce an output voltage that's uh, in the readable range, sort of 0 to 5 volts range that we can read with our Arduino. Then we're going to put that into the Arduino and get an analog uh, read value out of that. So when we run analog read of, say, A0, if that's what we've got it hooked up to, this will give us an output value. So following through this chain, all of these are linear operations, so this A should be linearly related to the mass. And if we want to understand how that works, we're going to have to track the, uh, the uh, relationships here and how much uncertainty that adds. So in this relationship here, we're going to start off with the base resistance of all of these uh, strain gauges, so R1, R2, R3, and R4. And that's going to give us four constants that we have some uncertainty about. So we just make a list over here of how many uncertain constants we've added. So there's four of them there. Now when we apply this mass, those resistances are going to change. And those delta R's, for all four of those, those are going to be proportional to the mass. So the amount the resistance changes will depend on the mass. But it's also going to depend on the exact material properties of this beam, the dimensions of this beam, and where exactly these strain gauges are located on that beam and where they actually got put, not just where they were designed. So we're going to wind up with these delta R's equal to some constant that's going to pull in all of those details times the mass. And the constant is going to depend on which strain gauge we're talking about because some of them are going to be positive and some are going to be negative. And so we're introducing four more constants here that we're uncertain about. And if we measured this beam really carefully and figured out exactly how it's going to bend using our solid mechanics, we could make some good estimates of what those constants are. So those delta R's change these resistances. We've got a linear relationship to the resistances, and we can measure the output voltage from our Wheatstone bridge. That output voltage is going to depend on the voltage with no load on it plus some change in voltage that's going to depend on a variety of things. Some delta V and that delta V is going to be a function of well all the delta R's and all of the original R's and the excitation voltage. And it's a linear function, so it's going to introduce a const another set of constants here. So we've added another four there. These ones here, we should be able to get that directly so it doesn't add any additional uncertainty. It comes from analyzing our bridge with these resistances. And that will give us our output measured voltage. Now,
then we'll have a small voltage here that we're going to have to amplify. And that amplification, well, it should be pretty simple. We should be able to get the amplified value being just equal to the offset plus the gain times the measured value from the bridge here. But that still introduces two more constants that we have some uncertainty about because we know approximately what the offset is and approximately what the gain is because of the resistor we chose. But there's some additional uncertainty in there. And finally, we've already been working on figuring out how much uncertainty we've got in turning a uh, voltage into an analog read value. So this analog read value is going to be some function of whatever that output voltage from the amplifier is and whatever reference voltage we're using on our Arduino. So we've added that one we've already kept track of, but we've also got to keep track of the uncertainty in the reference voltage. Now, if I add that up, 4 and 4 is 8, and 2 is 10, and 1 is 11. That's getting pretty big. 11 constants. And all of these are constants that depends on, depend on things that we don't know very accurately. So if we combine the uncertainty from all of those, then we should wind up with a total uncertainty, and we're probably going to find that it's pretty large. Now, if we were very, very careful in our manufacturing, we could make that smaller, but it would be difficult. And the other thing to keep in mind is it could be a little hard to analyze. So in our design of this measurement system working forward, we can make reasonable estimates of what we'd like these constants to be and design accordingly, pick the right size of, uh, of beam, for example, so it'll bend about the right amount, and choose a reasonable excitation voltage, so this will be about right. And we can set the offset and the gain to give something that'll be reasonable. And we've already found that we can work with the, with the Arduino. We can do all of this design in a forward direction and come up with reasonable values. And if we then measured what we get out, we should be able to go back in a reverse direction and turn our analog value that we measured, this integer value that came out of analog read, go back that way and get out a mass. So we went forward at the design stage knowing what mass we had and figuring out how that was eventually going to turn into an A value. And we made reasonable choices of magnitudes along the way and introduced a lot of uncertain constants that we need to do detailed analysis to figure out what they are. Now, this forward calculation and the inverse calculation that you could do when you measured, that all works beautifully, according to theory, provided you know all of the details of every single component all the way along. But I'd like to take another approach, and this is the approach we almost always use in measurement. Instead of trying to analyze every step along the way and get it exactly right, Let's assume that we did get the linear relationships we were looking for, that all of this understanding of how this measurement works is correct, but that we don't know what some of these constants are and that we've got the uncertainty about those constants. We could maybe eliminate all of these constants by simply calibrating. So if I calibrate, I've already built the system. So let's measure A0, and that'll be just whatever A value comes out of this end when I have no mass on here. So it's the A value I get when M is equal to 0. 
And then let's measure for reference mass. I can take, say, a 5 kilo mass and hang it on the end. And I'll get another value for A. I'll call that A reference. And it's whatever came out of my measurement system when the mass on the end was equal to the reference mass. So I've now got two points. I can do a calibration based on those two points. I, my best estimate based on those two points for whatever mass I have, an unknown mass in a later measurement, my best estimate is going to be, well, it would be zero if A was equal to A zero. So it'll be A minus A zero times, well, it's going to be times the reference mass. And in order to get that to work out right, I'm going to have to divide by a ref minus a zero. So a minus a zero over a ref minus a zero will go from zero linearly up to one as I go from a zero up to a ref. And if I multiply it by m ref, That'll translate that fraction that goes from 0 to 1 into a mass compared to the reference mass. I've now, by doing these two measurements, I've determined the whole relationship of all of these 11 constants and pulled them into just these two constants that I've actually measured in my calibration. So how do I now know what the uncertainty is? I don't know what's going on with all of these constants. I can test to find the uncertainty. And that would simply be a matter of measuring multiple values of mass. And analyze the variation. And typically we'd be looking for two standard deviations to give us an indication of the 95% uncertainty. Understanding this process is important to design the measurement system. Doing this calibration process is way more effective in reducing the uncertainty because it doesn't require that you know the exact manufacturing tolerances on all of the devices in your system. So, by all means, design from a physical understanding of how the system's working, but measure based on a calibration.